Hi, my name is Captain Spud, and I am uncomfortably warm. Today on Captain Spud Makes the Things, we're going to make paper craft objective rooms. They look like this. They are eight inches from corner to corner, with an annoyingly complicated flower shape that you'll need to cut and bend because I don't like you very much. These objective rooms are built primarily out of two materials, printed paper and black foam core. The expected completion time for this project will vary depending on your skill level. I, the greatest among terrain makers, can complete one of these in about two hours. Depending on your skill level, you may need to book a few weeks off of work. The primary construction material for this project will be black foam core. I recommend black foam core over white foam core for two primary reasons. Reason number one, anywhere your paper craft leaves a gap, it will look better to have a nearly invisible black core poking out than a glaring white one. Secondly, in my experience, I've simply found black foam core to be a better quality than white foam core. It's much more common to find white foam core with really crappy packing peanut foam on the inside, whereas you'll very rarely find that with black. On the other hand, black is a little bit more expensive, but still, the entire construction materials for this project should still cost you about $5 a room. A standard sheet of foam core is 20 inches by 30 inches. It comes in a few different thicknesses. This project will actually require five millimeter or three sixteenths of an inch thick foam core. If you're buying it at an office supply store, you don't have to take their word for it. Go grab a ruler off the other section and measure the foam core before spending money on it because I have definitely spent money on inadequately thick foam core. And of course, the most important component will be your paper craft patterns. You can download these patterns for free from captainspud.com slash papercraft. The pattern comes in several color variants. There are three interior colors, pink, green, and orange, each of which has three options for exterior color panels. The pink interior can be paired with orange, yellow, or green exterior walls. The green interior comes with red, purple, or pink exterior walls. And the orange interior has exterior variants in blue, black, and white. Any color set you choose can be used to create a vibrant and attractive objective room, as long as you don't choose the orange floor. This is because orange, as we all know, is the worst color. The PDF contains two pages. The first page contains one wall segment and the floor. The printing instructions are also on this page. The second page contains three wall sections, a highly complex and very technical measuring device, and finally, a bullet form version of the instructions that you're about to watch in the margins. Choose the color variants you like, download the associated PDF files, and send them off to any print shop near you to have them printed. When printing, make sure to have them printed at actual size. This is the most important thing about this entire project. They have to be printed at actual size, otherwise they will be ever so slightly too small and I will be very cross with you. You should have your patterns printed on thin cardstock. I'm a fan of 65 pound matte cardstock. You can also do 80 pound gloss cardstock or anything else of a similar range that your local print shop has. I don't recommend 100 pound cardstock because it tends to be too thick and too hard to bend. You can get away with it, but the results, in my opinion, will be a bit poorer. The PDFs are sized to be printed on 11 by 17 paper. For those of you in Europe, this would be A3 paper. It's not exactly the same size, and I don't actually have separate files available uh, for A3 paper. However, I have sized the 11 by 17 PDFs so that nothing will fall out of the printing area of an A3 page, or at least nothing very important. You'll lose a little bit of instructional text, but that's about it. Before we start, let's quickly go over some of the tools that you'll need to complete this project. A reasonable pair of scissors. Pencils, not pens, pencils. These need to be visible on black foam core and the shininess of a pencil will do that. The ink from a pen will not. Utility knives with a snap away blade. 
Cutting through foam and paper is shockingly hard on knife blades, so you will want one that you can break away in segments to keep getting a fresh blade as you work. A metal ruler, at least 12 inches long. I think this one's 15. White glue. Also, since we'll be applying this glue with a paintbrush, you'll need a bowl and a paintbrush. The paintbrush should be flat and anywhere between three quarters of an inch and an inch. A hot glue gun and at least half a dozen glue sticks. Now that we've gathered our tools and materials, we can begin. The first step is to cut the patterns out of the paper with a good pair of scissors. You're gonna end up with five pieces, a floor, a wall, a wall, a wall, and a wall. Once you've cut out your pattern panels, you'll need to score the wall panels in order to help them fold around the foam core. To do this, you'll need a metal ruler and a knife. Before beginning to work with a knife, ask yourself whether scratching the table where you're working would result in you being murdered by a parent or an employer. If that's the case, you may want to use a cutting surface for any of the knife cutting that we'll be doing today. I like to use vinyl placemats, which you can buy for about a buck. Each wall segment has a brightly colored exterior face and a more subdued interior face. Between the two is the top edge. You can tell the top edge because it's the area where all of the bevels that we'll later be creating terminate in a triangle. All of the triangles fall within the top edges. We are going to use a ruler and a knife to lightly score the folding edges of this top edge in order to allow it to fold more easily and more precisely around the foam core in a later step. You can score freehand with a knife if you prefer, but I personally prefer to use a ruler. I turn the ruler over so that the metal surface contacts the paper and I line it up on one edge that I need to score. And then I hold the knife very gently and I put it down. I am not, I repeat, I am not cutting through the paper. I am simply creating a scratch through the printed surface which will allow it to fold very precisely along the scored edge. I'll repeat this on the other side of the top edge. Lining up the ruler, holding the knife, scratching. And there you go. You should end up with a paper wall with an exterior, a top, and a back. Repeat this for every other wall.
The objective room pattern was designed so that any person building one would only need to actually measure anything at one step. This is that step. We need to measure on the sheets of raw foam core so that we can cut out squares and strips so that we can glue the paper craft pattern pieces down onto them. Each objective room requires a 10 inch by 10 inch square of foam core for the floor. The walls of the objective rooms are built around two and a half inch tall strips of foam core. Each room will require about 40 inches of these strips. Foam core sheets are 20 inches by 30 inches. So if you take advantage of the 20 inch section and break that into two, your two and a half inch strips, two of these strips will be enough walls for one room. If you're making up to three objective rooms, you can put a 10 inch square at the bottom left, at the bottom right, and then just above the bottom right. And then cut the rest of the sheet up into two and a half inch strips. I'm not an enormous fan of this plan because it involves cutting one of the room's walls up into individual pieces instead of two ofs. That will make more sense later. But it will still absolutely make you a room, it just makes the assembly a bit fiddlier. Ideally though, you want to be making the six rooms at a time. This allows you to cut one 20 by 30 foam core sheet up into six 10 by 10 squares for the floors, and then a second sheet up into 12, two and a half by 20 foam core strips. So depending on how many you're doing, cut your foam core sheets up accordingly. I will be making six objective rooms. So I will be dividing this first sheet up into 10 by 10 squares. Measuring with a ruler is the worst, so I have provided you a highly complex and very technical measuring device that you can use to make these measurements very quickly. For the first sheet, which will be divided into squares, everything needs to be in 10 inch segments. So hold up your measuring device and make ticks, horizontally and vertically. Next, divide up your sheet into two and a half inch strips. I find that a row of measurements along each edge and one down the center is sufficient to allow the ruler to connect all of the ticks. In order to make your highly complex and very technical measuring device a little easier to use, cut out a hair's width of paper around every one of the two and a half inch measuring ticks to allow you to simply put the pencil through the tick. Divide up your foam core. When cutting all the way through foam core, I personally find that it works quite well to do this in three passes. Your first pass is just going to cut the top paper. I like to do this freehand. You can use a ruler if you wish, but this will make it take longer. When you do this, hold the knife loosely in your hand and sight the line you'll be cutting directly under your head. Also, keep the knife angled straight up from the cut so that your cuts are not unnecessarily angled. With your arms loose, draw the knife toward yourself along the line.
that's the first cut. For the second cut, we're going to cut through most of the foam. When I do these next two cuts, I am going to lift the foam off of the table so that my boss doesn't murder me. You'll find that one, as long as the first cut is made precisely, all of the following cuts simply follow that first establishing cut. This next one has gone all the way through. We can even start cracking a little bit, although refrain from doing that because it'll wrinkle the uh, back of the foam core a little bit. Finally, cut through the back paper. Push until it comes through the back. And there you go. Repeat for the other strips. As you start cutting through your foam core, you may notice that your blade starts to become a little bit more difficult. Uh, two things to look for are that, uh, one, it, st it stops cutting quite as fluidly. It'll sort of like jump, 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 instead of just going through the whole thing. Um, another telltale sign is that it will, instead of making <clears throat> clean cuts along the edge, it'll start gathering up little beads of foam. Um, these both mean that the blade is becoming dull. Cutting through foam and paper is shockingly hard on a uh, stainless steel blade. Fortunately though, uh, your basic crappy dollar store utility knife um, comes with a blade that can simply be snapped into pieces so that you can constantly expose a new blade. So anytime you run into these telltale signs of a dull blade, simply uh, pop off a few segments. To do this, uh, you can use a pair of pliers if you have one on hand, but if you don't have one on hand, most terrible dollar store knives will have uh, a back end that pops off with a slot in the middle. You can use this slot to grab onto the blade and then twist and it comes off. Typically, once your blade starts getting dull, you wanna snap off two segments um, so that you have enough clean blade to go all the way through the sheet of foam core. There you go, it now extends, it's a clean blade, and you can put the back on. Another hidden feature is that a lot of brands of dollar store knives actually just come with an entirely separate second blade. Yeah, these aren't nearly as uh, one-shot disposable as most people assume they are. They're great. Once you've cut out your foam core strips, foam core squares, and your paper craft pattern pieces, and you've scored and folded the walls, you're ready to start gluing the paper onto the foam core. There are a couple of different ways you can do this. I strongly recommend doing this with slightly thinned white glue. However, if you just don't want to do that or you find white glue messy or you don't have white glue for some reason, you can also just use glue sticks. If you're doing a glue stick, you need to make sure to put lots and lots and lots of glue stick onto it in order to do a proper adhesion between this and this. And this will certainly be faster and easier to do than uh, the method I'm going to show you with the, the thinned white glue. However, long term you may find that uh, paper glued down to foam core with glue stick may start to peel up. It's not guaranteed, you may get many years of service out of it, but don't be surprised if glue stick doesn't hold over the long term. Instead of a glue stick, my recommended method of gluing the paper onto the foam core is to use thinned white glue. In order to set this up, you're going to need a bowl to mix in, you're going to need some white glue, you're going to need some water, and a paintbrush. You'll also need a stirring stick, but hey, that's what the back of the brush is for. Start by putting some glue in the bowl. 
You really don't need very much glue for this, but it's actually fairly difficult in my experience to put a small amount of glue in the bowl, so I mean, you're gonna waste some glue. It happens. Glue is not expensive. Next, add some water. This is just a little squeezy bottle of water I use for airbrushing. You want about half as much water as uh, you have glue. Mix it together until it flows reasonably well. Remember that you're going to be painting it, so you're, you want a consistency that's going to react fairly well to that. We're going to be gluing two paper wall sections onto each strip. They're going to go side by side, end to end. For the first one, put it over the top and line it up with the end. It should go all the way flush with the end. Then, with a pencil, simply mark how far along the paper craft it goes. Now that this area is marked, we're going to apply glue. With your paintbrush, grab some glue and apply it to the foam core. I definitely recommend applying it to the foam core rather than onto the paper because applying it directly to the paper may cause the uh, paper to become soggy, which can lead to a number of different things like buckling or uh, the print smudging. You don't want a heavy coat. You still want to be able to see the black through it. And we're just going to coat one side to start. As you work, keep going back and brushing the old areas just to keep the uh, glue moving and wet and stop it from drying. Once it's on, smooth it all out. The uh, grain of the glue application doesn't matter at all, so feel free to make it look messy. Once the glue is on, you're going to take one of your little wall tents, and you're going to place it over the foam core. Once again, line up one of the sides, flush, and press it down. When I do this, I'm going to hold it by the top, press the top down, and then just sort of squish. Hey look, I got some glue in this side. It's not the end of the world. Just get it wet and wipe it off with your shirt. Okay, now this side is fairly well pressed down. Clean up the glue, and then we'll do the other side. It's especially important when you do this that the edges have still wet glue because if you're going to get the, the because of all the places that this paper could end up peeling off the worst place is at the edges so that's where you want to make sure that your glue is in its best shape if the middle starts getting thin and dry it's not going to really destroy anything okay once you've coated that you're then just going to grab it, you're going to roll it over and press down. If you've done everything correctly, it should meet pretty flushly at the bottom. Don't worry yourself too much if it doesn't go exactly to the bottom. This really isn't that precise. So once again, keeping it tight, we're just going to press it down and tap. And there you go. 
That is the first wall section. Now we're just going to do the same thing for the next one. Once that's done, you should now have three pieces. You should have two 20 inch by two and a half inch foam core strips wrapped, each of them with two wall segments. And also a 10 inch by 10 inch foam core square with the crazy star shaped floor thing that I inflicted upon you. At this point, once you've applied your glue to the foam core and wrapped the paper around it, flattened everything and everything's good to go, you will want to leave this to dry for at least one hour. I'm not kidding, actually wait an hour. If you proceed to the following steps without waiting the full hour, I cannot be held responsible for what happens to you and the ones that you love. Welcome back. I hope that you, like me, have given your glue adequate time to dry. You can tell that time has passed on my end because, unlike me, the Captain Spud you were speaking to just a moment ago had not burned his mouth on a bowl of chili. Mm -hmm. Now that our glue has dried, we can proceed to what is, to be honest, the hardest part of this entire process, making the folding cuts into the foam core. Foam core, as you've probably noticed by now, has some thickness to it, and because of this, it's quite strong, and it does not easily bend. If you were to simply bend it until it actually bent over, you would pretty heavily uh, damage the foam core. It would cause creasing and buckling and things. So in order to bend in a more orderly fashion, foam core needs to be cut. To enable a cleaner fold, you need to cut a V-shaped section out of the foam core so that the pieces on either side of the cut can be tilted toward each other with adequate space allowed. Now, traditionally, these types of angled cuts are the most difficult part of building miniatures terrain out of foam core. When designing your own foam core buildings, there's a lot of measuring involved because you need to decide both where your foam core pieces will bend as well as how much material needs to be removed from either side. My objective room pattern attempts to resolve this problem for you by telling you exactly where and how to cut it. With that said, this is still going to be the most complex part. If anyone gives up on this project partway through, it's going to be at this step. To begin with, cut off the excess foam core from the end. Before proceeding with any of the angled cuts, there are two sets of cuts that I would recommend making beforehand. First are the triangles on top of the wall. These will become slightly awkward to cut later on as the paper will have become weakened by that point. So I like to do these before anything else. To do this, we are simply going to cut the paper layer from the top. We did not apply glue to this uh, edge earlier, so they will simply lift. This is fine. Next, cut all of the
of the foam off of the inside bottom of the wall. This will be indicated with a long black section with diagonal stripes across it. To cut this section, we are first going to cut the paper layer all along the wall. And then we will go a second pass going through the foam, but not cutting through the other side of the paper. Finally, we will separate the foam from the back sheet of the paper. To do this, we will take our knife, turn the wall the other way, and slide the knife in between the last two layers, that is between the black paper and the foam. Put it inside, angle it upward, and pull it backward. When I do this, I like to brace the knife against the back paper with my middle finger. And I find that this helps me to keep the blade at a consistent distance so that it doesn't drift into the foam or out the back of the paper. This may occasionally slip. That's normal. Don't worry about it. But try to keep it as under control as you can. If you've done this correctly, the foam should simply lift off. This has left the bottom on the outside undisturbed, but has removed all of the foam from the inside. One thing you can do as a helpful cleanup step is to use the top of the knife blade to sim and run it along the bottom and simply scrape up any extra foam that wasn't caught. This isn't totally necessary, but it tends to help things fit together a bit better later. It doesn't need to be perfect, just get what you can. And now the spicy part. Each place that the foam core needs to bend is indicated by a black area with light blue diagonal lines across it. On these areas, you will see white lines and text that tell you where to cut and how deep to cut. Down the center of each of these fold markings, you will see a white line labeled, cut the paper and foam. So, let's do that. We first, cut the paper. And then, we cut the foam. Taking great care not to cut the paper on the opposite side. If we've done this correctly, the foam core should now bend over backward quite easily down the precise line that we measured. At this point, give it a very slight bend most of the way over. Don't fend, fold it all the way over or you may cause uh, unsightly creases on the back side of the paper. Once this large central cut has been put through the foam and the bend has been created, we can then create the secondary cuts. These cuts will only go through the top paper layer. And then, same thing on the other side. Finally, the hard part. The part that not everyone, I think, will be able to do. We are going to cut out a triangular strip from this top cut down to the center fold. To do this, we are going to hold our knife at an angle. It will enter the foam where this top cut is, and we will angle it so that it goes down toward the center. 
pull it toward yourself, and you'll be able to see the tip of the blade popping out in the center. Then simply drag it toward yourself. Sometimes you'll be able to do this in one pass, other times it may take a few passes to get all of the necessary foam out of the way. Repeat for the other side. done it correctly, the foam core should perfectly bend at a 90 degree or 45 degree angle depending on the size of the cuts that you've made. Once you've done one, simply repeat the process. last thing to cut is going to be the floor. The floor is pretty easy. To start with, we're just going to cut around the outside of the paper to make the even star shape. Next, to help our walls adhere to the floor, we're going to remove just the top layer of paper from around the edge because we're going to be using hot glue. And hot glue on very smooth laser printed cardstock is going to have a lot of trouble adhering. So we just remove that printed layer uh, to, to help the glue stick. And the very last thing to do is we are going to go around and just slice underneath the top paper and lift it off.
And there we go. That is the last cut. And that was the hard part. If you got through it, we're just about done. The last thing to do is to glue everything together with a hot glue gun. Before we proceed with that, I really suggest that you just take your walls and dry fit them around the floor, just to make sure that you are you know where every single one of these pieces go. Because hot glue sets pretty quickly. And if you put some glue onto your foam core and then go to attach it and then get confused about where it was supposed to go, there's a good chance that it's gonna have set by the time you figure things out. So map things out ahead of time. The door on the pattern goes on the outside of the bump. And then all of the other segments should slot in around the edge from there. And the same thing in the other direction. Properly centering that door is going to be key to having all of the various pieces line up properly. Plug your glue gun in and give it a good 10 or 15 minutes to heat up. While we're waiting for it to heat up, a useful safety note. Something that I pretty much guarantee is going to happen at some point in the next five minutes is that we are going to put glue inside of a little channel and we're gonna press it into something and some of that glue is going to ooze out. And when that happens, the elevated human part of your brain is going to say to you, Jerry, because that's your name, Jerry, there's a thing oozing out of our beautiful objective room. Let's run our finger over it and clean that right out. Well, Jerry, let me tell you, that part of your brain is not your friend. Don't listen to it, because it's actually not as smart as another part of your brain, specifically the tiny bit of alligator brainstem that sits there and screams at you, fire bad. Which is to say, glue guns get pretty hot, don't touch oozing glue until it's had a good 30 seconds in the open air. I have burned my fingers many, many, many times because I listened to the wrong part of my brain. All right, let's start attaching. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be attaching a few segments at a time from this wall strip. When we do, we're going to put glue in the bottom track and then along that same length, we're gonna put a small bit of glue down the vertical tracks on the inside. Don't worry about putting glue on the exterior. As long as it's on one side, you're totally fine. You, trying to flip it over and get both sides is just gonna make you wait too long and the glue is going to set. So, and I'm gonna to have to move fairly quickly so I don't get to stop and explain things in the middle of this. So we're gonna start with just the door, mm -hmm. the three parts that go around the door here. I'm having some difficulty with my glue gun. Mm -hmm. Wow. it up properly we're gonna put it around here hey look it's that oozing I was talking about just ignore it don't put your finger on it that oozing happened because I put too much glue on the inside because this glue gun is apparently broken which is a great time to discover that fortunately I have an older uglier but better working glue gun that I'm gonna charge up now 
Two quick notes. First note. This glue gun doesn't work. Awesome. Second note. I just told you to start attaching these walls by the door. This isn't a very good idea. Weirdly, I know this isn't a very good idea. This is the ninth objective room that I've made. I know from experience that starting from the corner, like basically the end of a strip and putting it into the, 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 the corner here and moving up from there is actually a much better way to start a strip. But the last one of these I made was two weeks ago and I forgot about that. So when you're doing it, start with these two sections, excuse me, these two sections and then the third one, and then move on from there. Uh, yeah. All right. For the second segment, we're gonna do the walls in a different order. We're gonna do them in the correct order, which is to say, we're gonna start at the corner and then we're gonna go one, two, three. We're not gonna attach the front of the door. This was a mistake from earlier. When we do this, there's gonna be one extra thing to keep in mind, which is that when we connect the first strip to the second strip, we're going to need to also put a line of glue vertically here. So don't forget to do that. I have occasionally forgotten to do that. So we're doing three walls. One, two, three. We're gonna put some glue in here. We're gonna put some glue in here. Stick these three walls in. Make sure that the two that join together line up. They're sometimes going to need a little bit of help in order to, to make them flush with each other. And then we have section one, two, three on this side. doesn't take very long to set. We're just holding it at the back so that it lines up correctly on the floor. And then we're going to put all four remaining walls together and attach the end. We're going to do all of these at once just because otherwise the, uh, the folds end up being a little bit complicated. When we go to apply this last bit here, just to make the angles work properly, what we're going to do is we're going to put the, so all the glue is going to be on the bottom and here, here, and here, and the end. We're going to connect the end, and then we're going to snap that piece into place. And that's just a way to make sure that this tucks in properly. So I'm going to do the bottom first. Working quickly. touch the two walls together, and then we're going to snap this piece into place. It's not actually supposed to make a snapping sound like that, that was just the foam catching. It was more of a metaphorical snap. And with that, we're done. And that, hopefully, is a fairly reasonable uh, assembly process to make as many pretty cool looking uh, objective rooms as you may need if you're a tournament organizer who regularly needs to outfit a fairly large batch of tournament tables. Uh, this might be a pretty economical uh, way to get yourself a large stock of objective rooms. So uh, yeah, have fun. 
try not to cut yourself, try not to burn yourself, and if you have any questions at all, go back and rewatch the video. If you were paying attention, you should not have any questions. What's wrong with you, Jerry? Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Captain Spud makes the things. See you next time.